Double standard. Family is uneasy when one sister dates other's ex-lover. Dear Abby, my sister Jane and I are both in our mid-fifties. Jane has had numerous affairs over the past several years after her third divorce and was involved in an intimate relationship with a terrific man, Will, that lasted about three months. Jane broke up with Will several months after she decided he wasn't what she was looking for. And she's presently engaged to be married to a very nice man, Sam, and seems very happy. I dated Will several times before he and Jane became involved. We weren't intimate at that time, and we started seeing each other again over the last month. This time we have fallen in love. My problem is Jane is upset that Will and I are together and says I have betrayed her. She is worried about having her former and current lovers present at family gatherings, and our parents are also concerned. They say it's just weird. The fact that my sister was intimate with Will doesn't bother me or Will, but it sure bothers them. Abby, I have always been the good girl in the family and bowed to their pressure. But my relationship with Will is more than I could have ever imagined, and I don't want to give up my future happiness just to make my sister and my parents more comfortable. My adult children have all met and approve of Will in our relationship, but Jane and my parents won't budge. Any suggestions? Signed, Once Will in Walla Walla, Washington. Dear Once Will, Perhaps it's time to stop being the good girl. Begin acting like a woman who knows what she wants and confront the double standard in your family. If your sister was sophisticated enough to have serial affairs and your parents have been so worldly that they have turned a blind eye to it, then you should all be adult enough to realize that you are entitled to your happiness too. Although this may make for some awkward first few family gatherings, as grown-ups, everyone should be able to get past it. But if they can't, you are going to have to decide whether you want this man or to be a people pleaser for the rest of your life. Hello, welcome to the vocabulary lesson for double standard. Let's get started. First, in the title, it says, uh, Family is uneasy when one sister dates other's ex-lover. Uneasy. Uneasy means uncomfortable, an uncomfortable feeling. It's, uh, it's not a specific feeling. It just means a, a little bit uncomfortable, uh, not quite right something's a little wrong so if you say oh i feel uneasy it doesn't mean it's not a strong emotion it's kind of a weak emotion it just means oh something's not right you feel a little bit uncomfortable sometimes people will use this word to describe their stomach maybe they eat too much food and say oh my stomach feels a little uneasy right it feels a little uncomfortable it's not, you're not seriously sick, but it's just a little bit bad. So here it says family is uneasy. It just means the family's not really, really, really upset, but they feel uncomfortable. Because one sister is dating another sister's ex-lover. Okay. Let's uh, go into the uh, letter now. This woman's writing about um, her sister Jane. And she said, Jane has had numerous affairs. Numerous means many. So numerous is many. So she's had many affairs over the past several years. Now, affairs usually means, an affair usually means that you are dating somebody, but you're also already married, or you already have a boyfriend or girlfriend, but then you're dating another person secretly, usually. That's usually what affair means, to have an affair. However, in this letter, it does not mean that. Uh, this woman's a little bit older who's writing this letter. And so affairs, what she means is just uh, uh, lovers. So this woman is dating other people, having boyfriends, and she's having sex with the boyfriends. So she says affairs to mean boyfriends and having sex. And, you know, again, that's, an, that's kind of an, a word that uh, 
older people might use in this situation. I think most uh, younger people uh, would not use the word affair to describe that. They would just say boyfriends or dates. Okay, but anyway, um, moving on. And then she said that uh, after her third divorce, her sister's third divorce, she was involved in an intimate relationship with a man named Will. Intimate relationship means a, uh, a serious uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. Intimate means close, emotionally close. So you're, 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 you have strong feelings for each other. An intimate relationship also has the idea that uh, sex is involved. You're having sex with each other. But it's more than just that. Sex is involved, but also emotional connection, too. So an intimate relationship with Will. So she, she had a close relationship with this man named Will. And it lasted about three months. Now, to last, when used as a verb, means uh, to continue or to continue until. So it lasted about three months. It means it continued for three months continued until three months and then finished so it, it gives the idea of duration how long something happens uh, the movie lasted two hours it means it was two hours long all right and that's the past tense uh, the normal form of the verb is to last all right and then after three months they broke up and her sister decided it wasn't what she was looking for wasn't what she was looking for, or isn't what she is looking for, or isn't what I am looking for. It means uh, not what you want, not what she wants. So it wasn't what she was looking for. It means this man, Will, was not the kind of guy she wanted, not the guy she wanted, not what she was looking for. So not what you're looking for means not what you want. Okay, and that is the end of the first paragraph. Moving to the second paragraph. This woman now, the woman who's writing the, uh, the letter, she started to date Will after her sister broke up with Will. Then this new woman, the, the one who's writing the letter, she started dating Will. And um, she actually said that she had dated Will in the past before her sister Jane had become involved with him. To become involved with someone means to start dating them. So you might say, um, I am involved with her. It means I am dating her. Or you might say, I became involved with her two months ago. It means you started dating her two months ago. So to become involved with somebody means to start dating them. Okay, and then in the next sentence, she says, we weren't intimate at that time. Okay, so she's saying in the past, in the far past, her and Will were not intimate. Now, in this case, intimate, again, it does have an emotional idea of being very close emotionally, but it definitely has a sexual idea here in this situation. We weren't intimate at that time means they weren't kissing each other, they weren't having sex, They it, was, it wasn't a intimate relationship, right? They were dating, but maybe just casually, not so serious in the far past. And then her sister Jane started to date Will. Then Jane and Will broke up. And then finally, this woman started to date Will again. Kind of a complicated American dating situation here in this letter. All right. So she says, uh, this time we started dating again, and this time we have fallen in love. To fall in love means to start feeling love for somebody, uh, romantic love. Okay, and then she says, her problem, there's always a problem in these letters. My problem is that Jane is upset that I'm dating Will. She says, I have betrayed her. To betray someone means that they are your friend or your family or they are on your side and then you do something bad to them. You cheat them or hurt them. And we say this is betrayal is the noun. The verb is to betray. So if you betray somebody, it means they were your friend, they were your close uh, family member, they trusted you, and you cheated them or lied to them or did something bad to them. So you cannot betray an enemy. 
right? If, if somebody hates you and you hate them and you do something bad to them, that's not, that's not betray, right? Because they know you want, you hate them. <laughs> it's somebody who uh, likes you and you like them, but then you do something bad and they're surprised. That's betray, the verb to betray. Okay, so her sister Jane thinks, oh, you betrayed me. You're dating my ex-boyfriend. All right. And then she says that her family also uh, feels uncomfortable. They say it's weird. It's strange. Weird means strange. It's strange that she's dating her sister's ex-boyfriend. All right, and finally she says, uh, Abby have always been the good girl in the family, and I have always bowed to their pressure. To bow to pressure, bow to someone's pressure or bow to the pressure, it means that you do something that other people want you to do. Pressure means people are telling you to do something. For example, uh, you say, you know, um, AJ, AJ, go to the store. AJ, go to the store. Go to the store. Go to the store. And say, oh, no, I'm tired. I don't want to go to the store. Go to the store. Go to the store. Go to the store. You keep telling me. You are pressuring me, using it as a verb, pressuring me, pressuring me. Go, 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 go. And finally I say, okay, I'll go to the store. I bowed to your pressure. All right? You're telling me to do something. I don't want to do it. No, no, no. And finally I say, okay, I will do what you want me to do. We call that bowing to pressure, to bow to pressure. So she said, you know, when her family complains, she usually bows to their pressure. She does what they want her to do. Even if she really doesn't want to, she'll do what they want. She bows to their pressure. But she says this time Will is special, something special, and this time uh, she won't budge. And she says also that her parents and her sister won't budge. Okay, won't budge means won't move or won't change budge to budge means to move and it really means to move a little bit to move a little bit so let's say there's a big big rock a huge rock and you're pushing it you're trying to move it you're pushing it pushing it pushing it but it doesn't move not at all not one centimeter then you can say oh this rock won't budge this rock won't move not even a little bit. So it won't move at all. But we also use, now we also use budge to mean change, like change your mind, change your opinion. So if you say, I won't budge, it means you will not change your opinion. Not at all. Not even a little bit. You won't compromise. Nothing. All right. So that's it. And then she signs it, once will in Walla Walla, Washington. Walla Walla, Washington. Walla Walla is a town in Washington State, in the northwest part of America. And uh, this time, I'm uh, including Abby's answer. I usually don't because I want you to think about your own answer, but this time I'm including it. It has some good slang. In uh, her answer, she says that she needs to confront the double standard in the family. To confront means to uh, go against, to directly fight against or directly argue with something. To confront means you don't avoid it. And a double standard, which uh, I'm using for the title of this letter, a double standard means you have two different rules for different people. It's not, it's not a fair situation. For example, there's one rule for Jane and a different rule for the sister. So Jane, it's okay. She can date many guys, no problem. Her family says it's okay. It doesn't bother them. But then the other sister, if she dates many guys, they criticize her. They complain. They say, oh, you shouldn't date so many guys. So Jane can date guys. The other sister cannot. It's a double standard, right? Double meaning two. Standard means rule. So two rules. One rule for one person, a different rule for someone else. Uh, in my family, uh, we would complain about this a lot in my family, my, me and my sister. Um, I was the oldest child, still am the oldest child, and uh, my sister was younger, of course, and a girl too. So sometimes my parents let me do some things, but they would not let my sister do it. So I could 
go out with my friends until midnight. That was my rule. But then my sister, they told her, you must be back by 10. And she would get angry and say, this isn't fair. This is a double standard, right? There's a different rule for AJ and me. It's a double standard, not the same rule. All right. And then we keep moving and uh, we see the word worldly. She says, the parents, your parents are worldly. Worldly means experienced. It means you have a lot of experience in the world. You know about the world. It's the opposite of naive. We had naive in an earlier lesson. So worldly is the opposite of naive. It means you have a lot of experience. You know about the real world. And then we see the phrase, turned a blind eye to. To turn a blind eye to something means you ignore it. You ignore it. You don't look at it. You don't think about it. You don't talk about it. If you turn a blind eye to something, it means, oh, you ignore it. You, you, you don't, you pretend it's not there. So uh, they have turned a blind eye to Jane's dating. It means they've ignored her dating. So they can also do this for the new sister. All right, and then the last paragraph of the answer. Uh, she says, everyone should be able to get past it. To get past something, well, there's a direct meaning, which means you, you're moving and you pass. It means you go ahead of something or you go by something. But usually using it in a general life to get past a relationship, for example, it means you, uh, you, the problem is gone. The problem is gone. The problem is finished. So if you say, oh, m the parents had a problem with this situation, but they will get past it. It means they will solve the problem. They will relax. They will stop worrying about it. So to, and if you say, um, maybe you had a relationship and you broke up and you're very upset. Oh, <laughs> you're upset. But then six months later, you feel okay. You can say, ah, I, I'm finally past the relationship or I'm finally past feeling sad. It means y y it's gone now. You, you don't feel sad and terrible anymore. And then the final sentence, we see the phrase people pleaser. Abby says, you don't need to be a people pleaser all of your life. A people pleaser, please means to make happy. So a people pleaser is someone who always tries to make other people happy. They never make themselves happy. They just try to please other people. Always do what other people want, but never what they want. That's a people pleaser. All right, that is all of the vocabulary for this Dear Abby letter. Go on to the mini story and listen to this a few times if you need to. Oh, and I almost forgot. We have a contest right now, a remix contest. What I want you to do is uh, download a vocabulary lesson, then edit it. You can change it. You can add music. You can add stuff in your own language. You can do anything you want. You can cut parts. But edit it, you can use Audacity software, which is free. Do a Google search for Audacity, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. And remix means uh, rechange my uh, a vocabulary lesson. Try to make it better. Okay, bye-bye. Welcome to the mini story for Double Standard. Let's get started. There is a badass Marine named Saren. He has an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. They are very, very close. Saren likes Julia, but one day he decides she's just not what he's looking for. He breaks up with Julia. Julia feels betrayed. She says, how can you do this to me? Why are you hurting me? Please take me back. But Saren won't budge. He says, no, I don't want you, Julia. Julia can't get past the breakup. Every day she follows Saren. Every day she calls him. At first, Saren turns a blind eye to her behavior. But finally, he can't ignore it anymore. He yells at Julia and says, I won't bow to this pressure. I won't take you back. So leave me alone. Julia asks, do you have another girlfriend? He says, yes, I'm dating Hillary Clinton now. She's rich and very powerful. Really? Wow, I like her. I'm going to vote for her, 
says Julia. She says, I still feel a little uneasy, but if you're dating Hillary, I guess it's okay. Julia smiles and walks away. As she leaves, she yells, So, is Bill free for dating? Okay, one more time, this time with questions. There is a badass Marine named Saren. Badass. Ooh, that's slang. Badass means tough, very strong, tough, very good at what he does. So, very strong and tough. There's a badass Marine named Saren. A Marine is a kind of soldier, a kind of fighter. He has an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. Are Saren and Julia Roberts only friends, just friends? No, 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 no. They have an intimate relationship. They have an intimate relationship. It means they're very close. Not only friends, they are dating each other. They have an intimate relationship. Are they probably having sex? Yes, probably they are. They have an intimate relationship. They are dating. They're very, very close. Saren and Julia Roberts have an intimate relationship. Does Saren have an intimate relationship with Cameron Diaz? No, no, he does not have an intimate relationship with Cameron Diaz. He has an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. They are very, very close. Saren likes Julia. But one day, he decides she's just not what he's looking for. Does Saren want Julia? No, he doesn't. He decides she's not what he's looking for. He's not really what... She's not really what he wants. So, he decides she's just not what he's looking for. Is Hillary Clinton what he's looking for? Yes, Hillary Clinton is what he's looking for. She's rich and powerful. That's what he's looking for. Saren's looking for rich and powerful. Julia Roberts is not powerful enough, so she's not what he's looking for. Is Cameron Diaz what Saren is looking for? No, he doesn't want Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz is not what he's looking for. What is Saren looking for? Saren is looking for a rich and powerful woman like Hillary Clinton. So he breaks up with Julia. Julia feels betrayed. Does Julia feel he did something bad to her? Yes, exactly. He feel, she feels he did something bad to her. They were close. She trusted him, and then he hurt her. Did Saren betray Cameron Diaz? No, he didn't bet betray Cameron Diaz. He never dated Cameron Diaz. He never did anything bad to her. He did not betray Cameron Diaz. Did he betray Hillary Clinton? No, he did not. He did not hurt Hillary Clinton. Did he betray Julia? Well, breaking up is not really betraying. But Julia feels betrayed. She feels betrayed. Betrayed is the emotion, ED. Feels betrayed. But really, Saren did not betray her. But anyway, she says, How can you do this to me? Why are you hurting me? Please take me back. But Saren won't budge. Will Saren change his mind? No, he won't budge. He won't change at all. Will he change a little bit? No, Saren will not change, not even a little bit. He won't budge. He won't change at all. Will Julia budge? No, she doesn't want to budge either. She wants him back, 100%. She doesn't want to change either. So Julia won't budge, and Saren won't budge. Saren says, No, I don't want you, Julia. But Julia says, Yes, I want you back. Neither one of them will budge. They won't budge. Julia can't get past the breakup. Can Julia forget the breakup? No, she can't forget the breakup. She can't get past the breakup. Can Julia get past Mel Gibson? Well, yeah, she never dated Mel Gibson, so she doesn't need to get past Mel Gibson. Who does she need to get past? 
Well, she needs to get past Saren. Saren is her ex-boyfriend. She needs to get past Saren. Can she get past Saren? No, no, she can't get past him. She can't get past Saren. She can't get past the breakup. She's still upset. Is she still very sad about Saren and the breakup? Yes, that's right. She's still very, very sad. She can't get past the breakup. So every day she follows Saren. Every day she calls him on the phone. At first, Saren turns a blind eye to her behavior. In the beginning, does Saren get upset by her behavior? No, no. In the beginning, he turns a blind eye. He ignores her. He pretends he doesn't see her. He pretends he's not bothered by her behavior. So he turns a blind eye to her behavior. Does Saren turn a blind eye to Cameron Diaz? No, he does not ignore Cameron Diaz. Who does he turn a blind eye to? Well, he turns a blind eye to Julia Roberts. In fact, he turns a blind eye to her behavior. He ignores her behavior. Does Julia turn a blind eye to Saren? No, no, she doesn't ignore him. She does not turn a blind eye to Saren. Saren turns a blind eye to her behavior, but she does not turn a blind eye to Saren. She keeps calling him. Finally, Saren can't ignore her anymore. He yells at Julia and says, I won't bow to this pressure. Will Saren do what Julia wants him to do? No, no, he won't. He won't bow to the pressure. He will not change because of her pressure. Will he bow to Cameron Diaz's pressure? No, Cameron is not pressuring him. Cameron is just a friend. She's not pressuring him. Julia is pressuring him. He won't bow to Julia's pressure. Will he date Julia again? No, he won't. He won't bow to her pressure. He won't do what she wants. What does Julia want? Julia wants to date him again. So she's pressuring him. Please date me again. Please date me again. Please date me again. Will he bow to this pressure? No, he won't bow to this pressure. He says, I won't take you back, so leave me alone. Julia asks, do you have another girlfriend? And he says, yes, I'm dating Hillary Clinton now. She's rich and very powerful. Julia says, really? Wow, I like her. I'm going to vote for her. I still feel a little uneasy, but if you're dating Hillary, I guess I'm okay. Does she feel a little uncomfortable about Hillary? Yes, that's right. She feels a little uneasy that he is dating Hillary. Is she very upset that Saren is dating Hillary? No, no, no. She's not very upset. She's just a little uneasy. She's uneasy. She's not very, very upset. She's just uneasy. Why is Julia uneasy? Well, she's uneasy because Saren is dating a new girl. But it's Hillary Clinton and she likes Hillary. So she's only uneasy, not very upset. Is Saren uneasy? No, Saren's not uneasy. Saren is okay. He's dating Hillary and he's happy with Hillary. So Saren is not uneasy about Hillary. Who is uneasy about Hillary? Well, Julia Roberts is a little uneasy about Hillary, but just a little. It's not bad. And she says, well, I'm going to vote for her. So if you're dating Hillary, it's okay. Finally, she turns and walks away. When she's walking away, Julia smiles and she yells to Saren. So does this mean Bill Clinton is free for dating? All right, now one more time. This time I will pause after the key phrases. Please repeat the phrases after me, but don't just repeat, copy my intonation. 
Copy my pronunciation. Try to speak exactly like me. Let's go. There is a badass marine named Saren. There's a badass marine named Saren. He has an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. He has an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. They are very, very close. Saren likes Julia. But one day he decides she's just not what he's looking for. She's just not what he's looking for. He breaks up with Julia. Julia feels betrayed. Julia feels betrayed. She says, how can you do this to me? Why are you hurting me? Please take me back. But Saren won't budge. But Saren won't budge. He says, no, I don't want you, Julia. Julia can't get past the breakup. Julia can't get past the breakup. Every day she follows Saren. Every day she calls him. At first, Saren turns a blind eye to her behavior. At first, Saren turns a blind eye to her behavior. But finally, he can't ignore it anymore. He yells at Julia and says, I won't bow to this pressure. I won't bow to this pressure. I won't take you back, so please leave me alone. Julia asks, do you have another girlfriend? And Saren says, yes, I'm dating Hillary Clinton now. She's rich and very powerful. Julia says, really? Wow, I like her. I'm going to vote for her. I still feel a little uneasy. I still feel a little uneasy. But if you're dating Hillary, I guess it's okay. Julia smiles and walks away. As she leaves, she yells, So, is Bill Clinton free for dating? All right, that is all of the mini story. Now pause and try to tell all of the story yourself. You don't need to remember every word, but try to use the new phrases and the new words correctly. If you cannot, just relax and listen again. Listen to this story every day for one week or two weeks, and you will internalize the new phrases. You'll also internalize a lot of basic grammar and a lot of basic pronunciation by listening again and again and again. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the POV or point of view mini stories for double standard. Same mini story, but first starting with the phrase one year ago. One year ago, there was a badass Marine named Saren. He had an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. They were very, very close. Saren liked Julia, but one day he decided she just wasn't what he was looking for. So he broke up with her. Julia felt betrayed. She said, how can you do this to me? Why are you hurting me? Please take me back. But Saren wouldn't budge. He said, no, I don't want you, Julia. Julia couldn't get past the breakup. Every day she followed Saren. Every day she called him. At first, Saren turned a blind eye to her behavior. But finally, he couldn't ignore it anymore. He yelled at Julia and said, I won't bow to this pressure. I won't take you back, so leave me alone. Julia asked, do you have another girlfriend? And he said, yes, I'm dating Hillary Clinton now. 
She's rich and very powerful. Julia said, Really? Wow, I like her. I'm going to vote for her. I still feel a little uneasy, but if you're dating Hillary, I guess it's okay. Julia smiled and walked away. As she left, she yelled, So, is Bill free for dating? Okay, our next version is going to start with the phrase, Since 2004. Okay. All right, there's a badass Marine named Saren. Since 2004, he has had an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. They have been very, very close. Saren has liked Julia this whole time. But one day he finally decided she just wasn't what he was looking for. So he broke up with Julia. Julia felt betrayed. She said, how can you do this to me? Why are you hurting me? Please take me back. But Saren wouldn't budge. He said, no, I don't want you, Julia. Julia couldn't get past the breakup. Every day, she followed Saren. Every day, she called him. At first, Saren turned a blind eye to her behavior, but finally, he couldn't ignore it anymore. He yelled at Julia and said, I won't bow to this pressure. I won't take you back, so leave me alone. Julia asked, do you have another girlfriend? And he said, yes, I'm dating, dating Hillary Clinton now. She's rich and very powerful. She said, really? Wow, I like her. I'm going to vote for her. I still feel a little uneasy, but if you're dating Hillary, I guess it's okay. Julia smiled and walked away. As she left, she yelled, So, is Bill free for dating? All right, our final version begins with the phrase, Next year. Next year, this is going to happen in the future. I'm imagining this. Here we go. There's a badass Marine named Saren. Next year, he'll have an intimate relationship with Julia Roberts. They'll be very close. Saren will like Julia, but one day he'll decide she's just not what he's looking for. He'll break up with Julia. Julia will feel betrayed. She'll say, How can you do this to me? Why are you hurting me? Please take me back. But Saren isn't going to budge. He's going to say, No. I don't want you, Julia. Julia won't be able to get past the breakup. Every day, she'll follow Saren. Every day, she'll call him. At first, Saren will turn a blind eye to her behavior. But finally, he won't be able to ignore it anymore. He'll yell at Julia and say, I won't bow to this pressure. I won't take you back. So leave me alone. Julia will ask, Do you have another girlfriend? He'll say, Yes, I'm dating Hillary Clinton now. She's rich and very powerful. Julia will say, Really? Wow, I like her. I'm going to vote for her. I still feel a little uneasy, but if you're dating Hillary, I guess it's okay. Julia will smile and walk away. As she leaves, she's going to yell, So, is Bill free for dating? All right, and that's our final version in the future. Please go back now, listen to each version and then pause. Try to tell each version yourself out loud. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to remember every word. But try your best and try to use the correct form of the verbs. Sometimes the vocabulary changes a little bit. Listen for that. If you can't do it, if it's too difficult, no problem. Just relax. Listen to these versions many, many times. Every day, listen to it. One time, two times, three times. The next day, again. The next day, again. It takes some time. But if you do this every month, every day, for one month, two months, six months, one year, you will get a more natural feeling for English grammar. Okay. See you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the commentary for Double Standard. Now, this uh, letter uh, caused some interesting discussions in my San Francisco class. And there were two main topics. One topic was the topic of families and individuals. And the other topic was double standards for men and women. 
And I'll talk about both of these and uh, a little bit about uh, what's common in America, common opinions in America, and uh, what are some of the uh, different ideas in different countries. So first, this topic of family and individuals. Most people know that uh, American culture, American society, values individualism or individuals. And we have an idea that adult individuals uh, should make their own choices. And they should not worry about what other people think, even their families. And as you get older, this becomes stronger and stronger. So when I read this letter, for example, and I saw this woman is uh, in her mid-50s, middle 50s, so she's probably, you know, 55 years old. And she's worried about what her family thinks about her uh, new uh, boyfriend. My first reaction, I thought, this is very strange. This is an older woman. Why does she care about what her sister and her parents think? She should just do what she wants. She's, she's an adult woman. This is crazy. And uh, that's a common American reaction. Uh, we have an idea in the United States that uh, when you're an adult, you should be independent. You should make your own decisions. You should not ask your parents for advice all the time. You should not live with your parents when you're an adult, right? That's a very common, strong view. Uh, this is very interesting because in, in classes that I've had before, uh, there's a very interesting difference in culture here, especially this idea of living with your family. Some cultures, uh, people continue to live with their families until they get married. So if they're 30 and they're not married, they still live with their parents. If they're 35 and they're not married, they're still living with their parents, and that's normal, And uh, which is fine. There's not a right or wrong answer here, nothing not better or worse, but it, it is a big difference. In the United States, that is uh, seen as very negative. There's a, a strong feeling that you should not live with your parents when you're an adult. Uh, so, for example, uh, in my own life, I uh, went to university when I was 18, and then uh, I graduated university. I was 20, 22, I believe. And after that, I got my own apartment, and I never lived with my parents again. I didn't want to live with my parents, <laughs> and my parents did not want me to live with them. If I had asked them, can I live with you, they would not have been happy. They would not have liked that. Uh, they, it would, they would think there was something wrong with me. I, I can't support myself. I can't get my own job. I'm not independent. That's not good. So, and, and for me, I did, wouldn't like it because I don't want to live with my parents and I'm, I'm an adult. I don't want them telling me what to do or anything like that. So it's on both sides. Both the children and the parents uh, have this idea that when you're an adult, you leave home and you should be independent and should make your own decisions. But I've met uh, students from other countries who say it's very normal to live with their families until they're married. And in some cultures, even after they get married, the couple will go and live with one of the families, the husband's family or the wife's family. And that's considered normal. So in these cultures, family and the family's opinion continues to be important even when they're adults. So maybe some of you uh, listen to this article, you think, oh, this sounds, this sounds normal. Maybe some of you think this woman needs to worry about her family. If her family doesn't like the situation, maybe she should not date Will. That might be a reaction that some people have. Uh, however, uh, Abby's answer is probably the normal answer most Americans would give, which is, Stop worrying about your family's opinion. Don't be a people pleaser. Do what you want. All right. Next, the issue of double standards. This was the second topic uh, we discussed in my San Francisco class. And the double standards refers to men and women and the fact that there are double standards for men and women when dating. If a man dates a lot of women, it's often no problem. People don't criticize him. In fact, sometimes they think, hey, he's a cool guy. Look at all those girlfriends he has. This is great. What a good guy. And in some cultures, this double standard is very strong, right? Men can date a lot of women, and people think it's good. 
On the other hand, if a woman dates a lot of men, then she's bad. She's a bad girl, and people criticize her, and people don't like it. And that's clearly a double standard, right? That's the definition of double standard. Two different rules for the same situation. If a man does something, it's okay. If a woman does it, it's not okay. And uh, in my class, there were clear double standards for most cultures. Stronger in some countries, weaker in other countries. This double standard does exist in America. There is still a double standard between men and women when dating. However, that double standard is getting uh, weaker and weaker. Uh, women uh, are getting more and more equal. If a wo it's very normal now for a woman to date uh, lots of different guys, and it's generally not a problem. This woman is in her 50s. She's an older woman from an older generation. Maybe that's why in this letter she sounds like she's a little bit criticizing her sister Jane for dating many men. Uh, I think for younger Americans it's no problem. It's just totally normal. Uh, so this double standard is not so strong in America, getting weaker all the time. In other countries, uh, in my class, some of the uh, Asian students, for example, uh, mentioned that this is a very strong double standard in their countries, that the men are almost encouraged to date a lot of girls, and it's seen as very cool. But if a woman even has sex before she's married, something's wrong with her. She's a bad girl. Everybody criticizes her. And it's a strong double standard. I guess the good news is most of them did mention that it's improving. In, mo in all the countries uh, in, my, in my class that were represented, uh, the students did say it's getting better. It, it Maybe it's still bad, but the double standards are improving uh, in most places in the world. And that's good. Well, okay, the, those are our topics. That's our commentary for this letter. Hope you enjoyed it. See you for the next lesson. Bye-bye.